is Peter. I work at IMAP in Warsaw. And uh, we met with Gavin approximately in February, I suppose. And we had a short chat uh, regarding our future collaboration and possibilities of us helping you with some parts of the Ethereum project. Uh, it happens that I work at a company that specializes in compilers, specialists right then, and it resulted in LLVM implementation of EVM that Pablo is going to describe. But at the same time, we had a little misunderstanding uh, among us, and when Gavin described the Ethereum, our CEO remembered two phrases, Turing completeness and virtual machine. So after, I don't know, half an hour, he thought, well, great, that may be a supercomputer. That's something that can distribute computation and, I don't know, locally run it. So no, not exactly. It's more about the consensus and keeping a solid uh, compact state, not about distributing computations. So, hmm. Okay. So what can we do? Maybe we can provide something like this. And he called it Golem from Golem 14. It is a story written by uh, Stanislav Lem. It's a machine that got so, so hmm, large and complicated that it gained uh, awareness of itself. So, okay. Nice, let's have a world supercomputer. If we cannot do it with Ether, maybe we can implement it ourselves. Uh, after another thought, we come to a conclusion that it doesn't really make sense because there are some attempts to implement something like this, and they do not work so far. Well, we have cloud computing, but this requires some structure over the machines and hardware, and we cannot build a supercomputer or provide computing power out of the box using just PCs which stay at homes of any people who would like to provide computing power. So what to do? We should give some incentive to them. They should be able to make money and then maybe that, that would work. But still, that's pretty hard because that would require registering into some services that would allow them to transfer value for the computing power that we, they would like to share. So the obvious idea is that it should be backed up by Ether or Ethereum. And that's what we started to think about. So the main idea is that we would like to provide users of regular PCs or whatever computers uh, with possibilities of either distributing their computation across a peer-to-peer -peer network or to make some value by providing their uh, resources, either computation or storage or, I don't know, bandwidth for that matter. Uh, and it should allow them to do it pretty easily on both sides. Special, uh, specificating tasks may not be so easy, but uh, computation should be out of the box without any additional configuration. And they should get remuneration for computing something. Uh, that's, what's important is that we don't want them to uh, get hmm, threatened by malicious nodes inside the network, so all computations have to be separated from their host machines. This is where uh, virtual machines come into, into role. And in general, the task is some code, well, in fact, any code that can be written in one of support languages that we can distribute across the network and run inside a virtual machine with some constraints because, first of all, we don't want to uh, thread that computing node. And on the other hand, we wouldn't like to create an environment which would allow attackers, hackers, I don't know, whatever malicious nodes they may be in the network, to attack other computers, not necessarily the host one, but some other. We can imagine a scenario when someone 
prepress a DDoS attack, distributed denial of service, just by sending a million tasks that would try to connect to some server. So this cannot happen. Uh, we started our proof of concept. Uh, right now we implemented, well, I, sorry for the naughty graphics, but that's how it looks like right now. Well, we implemented a few renderers uh, as a backends, and right now we have both open source renderers and commercial production renderers uh, added to the project. And they can, uh, we cannot see this here, but right here, uh, there is a rendering of four images. The one shown here is the last one. The last one is Mental Ray. I don't know if you know the renderer. It's a commercial renderer. And other three are two PBRTs and one V-Ray. V-Ray is also a commercial renderer. On the right pane we see subtasks, which means that small tasks that were distributed across the network and are being gathered into the final picture. So this is it. Um, we believe that such framework can be used for something more than just rendering. Well, in fact, for any computation that can be distributed. And in, in principle, it should work as a MapReduce uh, computation model. Maybe a bit more generic because we don't want just to distribute and gather re results, but to prepare a graph, a cyclic graph of such tasks that can distribute their subtasks, gather the results, and based on that results, send another list of tasks to perform other computation. And you can use it. We, we used it for rendering and for scientific calculations in chemistry. It can be used for Monte Carlo integration easily, even for Bitcoin mining if someone would like to do it. Uh, the main problem with this approach is that it requires means of validating and collecting results because one is, once it's set to a network, we have no idea who may be calculating and what value of the res th those results may have. They may be completely invalid, they may be partially invalid or simply valid. So we, we need some means of getting the right results and collecting them into our, the results that we need to use, we can use. So what did they have in common, Golem and Ethereum? Because we can use Ethereum as a payment system, but on the other hand, there are some modules and parts of the source code that seem pretty similar in both projects. We would require a very good peer-to-peer -peer network module and transport, transport layer, uh, along with uh, node discovery and resource transfer, and very good resource sharing and management machinery, because when you write a program, you don't only try to access local files or web and servers, but maybe other computers in the network and so on. So it should all be worked out. But it's, that's the side of the Golem, although I believe that some resource sharing would be also required in Ethereum, if parts of code are going to be shared across the network. But from our perspective, the most important thing is to use Ethereum as a generic payment system because, oh, because, because the traditional approach look, looks like this. A user has have to register to some service that allows him, her, to transfer value. And this is a centralized solution, requires giving out some private data that would be stored somewhere in some, on some servers. And what, I don't know, should be a problem, maybe it's not a problem, we believe it is, that microtransactions are not supported. When we distribute a large task into the network, it may be distributed across a broad subset of, uh, of this network and uh, many nodes, which may be well, which is very difficult to handle when you use PayPal or similar solutions and should be relatively difficult to implement with Bitcoin, for example. I don't know what's the scale of 
supported granularity of microtransactions in Ethereum, what is going to be, but I believe that it might be much better than the current solutions. We wouldn't like to flood Ethereum with microtransactions, so we, at some point we'd have to decide what is the level uh, on, at which we can process transactions, because if it works out, then it may be thousands, most hundreds of thousands a second, so that wouldn't be feasible, I suppose. Uh, that's the another, well, it's nothing groundbreaking, neither in terms of the idea, well, although putting it all together is, seems to be pretty difficult, and in terms of iterative contracts, it's just, I don't know, vanilla implementation of common contract that should take place in Ethereum. It's just used to uh, transfer value between participating nodes. Simple contract is just a contract between two nodes, one that distributes tasks and the other that provides some resources, for example, computational power. Uh, software as a service contracts may involve another parties, for example, programmers who provide their parts of code, or in case of renderers, companies that may distribute their rendering engines, so that that, that company or person also gets remuneration for providing solution. And time-dependent contracts, for example, when you would like to have host something for some time, and we have to pay in timely fashion or for hosting it. So, from our perspective, this is how it looks. Golem and Ethereum are independent solutions. But to make Golem really attractive, it has to be fully decentralized and, well, most, more important, easy to use and easy to install. So, forcing users to give out their uh, data, uh, credit card data, for example, uh, doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, at least much sense. Uh, existing solutions require uh, such registration and they doesn't seem to make uh, a success with this attempt, uh, approach. And as for Ethereum, I don't know, this is just a guess, but it's quite possible that, uh, that software as a service approach may attract uh, more programmers towards Ethereum. I cannot guarantee that, but it seems reasonable. And that's how it looks. If you just, if you're not bored with it, I can show you how the graphic outline of the system looks like. Yeah? So, it's, it's not that complicated, but it, it's not easy as well. I don't know if there is anything similar to Ethereum, but we need a solid peer-to-peer -peer layer built on top of some transport layer. Uh, we need network adapter to provide resource management and the global I.O. That would, example, that would allow nodes to read and write data in a safe fashion. It has to be really well thought over and implemented. Task protocol is protocol responsible for distributing tasks across the network and gathering the results, uh, as well as connecting it with the transaction system, that's a payment system. And thus, this layer is all about the peer-to-peer -peer network. Sorry. Uh, the upper layer is a client layer, and the central integration component was called the client before, and it's responsible for defining tasks and put, passing them to the layer that, that's responsible for computation. We can, below this line, we can test it just on a single machine running the task uh, on a few processes or even threads. So that's good for testing purposes. As you can see, there's a virtual machine that is separated by another border because we don't want to give direct access from the virtual machine to uh, external world. Especially we wouldn't like to allow processes that might be written by someone to uh, connect with uh, any computer in the network. Above that we have task definition framework which describes in detail how tasks 
uh, are specified, yeah? So you're saying that the individual instances uh, can now connect to each other, so there are no shared resources? So that that's there are shared resources, but, well, I didn't tell that explicitly. The code that is run is just about any code you can write that we can share. But we explicitly have to point which resources should be shared. Because we can, for example, try to download some data from a server, and that's not a problem if you do it with one node. But when you send, distribute it over the network and every node downloads the same data, that may be a threat to that server. So in, in this case, we can simply force uh, the node that distributes the task to download the data and then just distribute the downloaded data to computing nodes. Yeah. What's the sorting and grouping task interface is that interface responsible for creating a graph of uh, map reduced tasks. And above that, we have either user interface, not similar to the one that I presented, but the one that should be easy to use and easy to specify tasks, and multi-programming language support, which should, I hope, allow users to simply write code using uh, structure, some, some sort of standard, li standard library and uh, control structures that are similar to uh, existing control structures in uh, languages, for example, Parallel 4. That should be distribute the tasks and programmers shouldn't be really aware of what's going on down here. Okay. And we believe that there may be many, many, many virtual machine flavors, or maybe not technically, but uh, in terms of compute capabilities, and that virtual machines should be defined by users, which poses one problem that this does not fit the whole picture as virtual machines, or the configuration, in fact, uh, would have to be distributed in a separate channel, not as a part of the application. But that may not be a problem at some point, because we can allow users to distribute the data, the messages that they have such machines, and an interested party would be able to download and use it. Okay, I, I think that's it. Thanks, Peter. Thanks.